back to another vlog. Today is Tuesday the 10th of November and I thought I'd take you along on today's adventures. Um, today's actually going to be quite a typical Tuesday in my life. I usually go food shopping on Tuesdays, I always have a seminar at 4 to 5.30 and there's usually some type of exercise involved as well. So today should be a representative day of a normal Tuesday in my life. Um, so yeah, come along. Uh, it's obviously it's around 8 currently and yeah, I'm just having my coffee as usual um, and yeah. Before I get too much, uh, much further into this video, however, I just wanted to address something that was been asked both on my Instagram and on some YouTube comments, and that is, how do I get into Oxford and or Cambridge, and what is the application process like? Um, now, okay, so firstly, I, I was debating whether or not to make this a separate video. I decided not to, just because I don't feel qualified to talk about this, um, and also I didn't want to make it very long, so I decided to just put it in this vlog. So this is advice and like tips for or like things to consider if you are thinking of applying to a research degree so an MPhil, an MST or a, a PhD or a DPhil not for undergrads um, although I mean by all means if you are if you're a person who's going to, going to apply to an undergraduate degree but like you, it's not gonna hurt but it might not be very relevant to you um, since the application process is a bit is a bit different. I should also say that if when you apply to, for a research degree, you don't apply through UCAS like you do with an undergraduate undergraduate degrees, and for Oxbridge, you don't apply to a college. You apply to the department, and the college is like a secondary thing that happens when you have an offer. That's when you'll get um, assigned to a college. I also just want to say that I did my MPhil at Cambridge, and I did my. PhD, I do my P, I'm doing my PhD at Oxford, in case nobody knows, I'm also doing them in linguistics, so my MPhil course was in theoretical and applied linguistics, and my DPhil course is in linguistics, philology, and phonetics. So yeah, back to, um, back to the, the, the rambling. Um, and basically, the application process is not very scary at all, it's quite, um, it's quite nice, so there are different, um, application deadlines, there's one in, in, in Michaelmas time, so in during autumn, um, which is, I think that's the deadline you have to apply to if you are non-EU. Uh, so, and then there's the, the one in January, which is uh, the funding deadline, and it's usually in early, early January. And so at this stage, if you apply before this date, you will be automatically considered for certain funding bodies, and you can also apply specifically to other funding opportunities. There is also a, a third deadline in in spring, so I think around March time, but I would highly suggest to basically don't consider that one because that deadline is only open if there are places left and usually there aren't any places left because as we all know, Oxford and Cambridge are competitive universities and the places fill up really quickly. So I'd say aim for um, January, the January deadline, if you don't want to aim for the earlier one. And obviously you have to submit an application. And for the application, you need uh, the proper transcripts and certificates that they ask for. You need references. You need two references for Cambridge, both MPhil and PhD. And you need uh, three for, K for, K for Oxford, both MPhil and PhD. And uh, then you obviously need to submit. Uh, you need to prove your English proficiency if you're not a native English speaker. Uh, I did this by, by showing them that I'd done my BA in England and that I'd been that, that had been taught in English and that was enough. Uh, but for Oxford I had to write an English test waiver and if you can't do any of these things you have to sit an English test and you have to score at least a 7.0. All this information is available on the course websites, or it should be. If it's not, you should contact the department. Um, but yeah, then the main part of a research application is the research proposal, which is quite straightforward. A research proposal, generally speaking, is divided into two parts. Uh, the first part is kind of a short personal statement where you talk about your academic history, you talk about uh, your interests and work you've done which is relevant to the proposal you're you're proposing <laughs> the research you're proposing and you 
you talk about why specifically you want to go to the university you're applying to and how your work will fit into the to the the atmosphere and the um, the environment at the university and the department. The second part, which is like the most important one, I'd say is obviously the project itself, the research you want to undertake. Well, firstly, you need to have a thesis title, which should be the heading of this second section. Then you have an abstract where you summarize the research you want to undertake. Then you have a brief literature review where you as with any literature review, you highlight interesting points from uh, from key literature and then you identify gaps in the literature and how you plan to address those gaps. And then you go on to methodology uh, and you talk about perhaps if your work is qualitative or quantitative, um, how, are you, how are you collecting your data? Are you doing field work? Are you using a corpus? If you're using a corpus, are you using a pre-existing one or are you creating your own? Is your data synchronic or diachronic? And so on and so forth. The last section is really important as well, and it's basically how your work is go what your work is going to contribute to the field. Um, they want a novel proposal. They want you to be able to produce something that is new and that can positively impact the field. This doesn't have to be like revolutionary. You can just like have new data and you can come up to with new conclusions. But it, it can also be to the extent that you're looking at a language that hasn't been looked at before, a dialect that hasn't been looked at before, and that is very attractive to universities, from what I've been told. So this is me from the future, I'm just editing this, and the the final thing that you need, in fact, is a bibliography or a list of references, that's very important. Um, so yeah. Now obviously, the, the, the quality and the content of your research proposal is usually what sort of, if you qualify and if you have like good grades, you have good references and blah 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 blah, this is where, this is, this is what sets successful applications apart from unsuccessful ones. And I just want to encourage you to think of three different questions before and during your writing process of this research proposal. And the first question is, how is or why are you applying to the university? And this might seem like a stupid question, you may be like, oh well of course I'm applying because it's Oxford. And that's a valid reason, but I don't think it should be the only reason. A good reason might be, so you, you need this book, you need this old document to do your th research, uh, that, that document is available at one of the Bodleian libraries in Oxford and if you don't access that book or that document you can't do your research. That's a really good reason why you want to go to Oxford. Another good reason might be, oh there's a supervisor there that is doing exactly what I want to do and they would be a huge help to me. And that's another good reason. So just think about why you want to go. Um, really think about that. Um, and. Yeah, integrate that into your proposal. Like I said, during the personal statement bit, that's where you write about this. The second question I would encourage you to think about is, how is your work going to fit into the department? And this is basically just making sure that you're not applying. For instance, I'm just gonna give you a concrete example. So at Cambridge, they do theoretical and applied linguistics, but they they, their applied bits are generally sort of geared towards phonology and sound and whatever else that might be. They don't work in a, an area called discourse analysis, where you basically analyse social interaction. Um, if you want to do discourse analysis at Cambridge and you have a proposal that's really good that focuses a lot on discourse analysis, they might be reluctant to accept you because that, firstly, that is not something that they do and secondly, there might not be any courses or any modules available to help you um, to help you do that. Now this leads me on to the third question you really should consider, and that is, um, is there a supervisor available that can supervise this project you're proposing? And this is up to you to figure out before you apply. You have to go on the course website, you have to go and search the department website and look at the people that work there. Uh, and see if anyone would be available to supervise this project and suitable to su supervise this project. If you find somebody who would be super, uh, uh, suitable in your opinion, you should write to them and you should introduce yourself. You could even send your proposal, you could send them your CV and you could just say, hey, are you available to supervise this project? Um, I really admire your work and I think you could help me a lot. And then just to set up the initial uh, connection between you and a potential supervisor. Not only is this useful uh, for you to sort of know if, if anyone's available, so you don't have to sit and worry about that when you've sent in your application, but it's also really good because that at that point, when you've made this initial point of contact, you 
they know who you are, this person knows who you are, because when you submit an application, there's a section in the application form where you have to fill in a proposed supervisor's name. And when you do that and the application is submitted, that person is notified. And if they, if they know who you are and they know your project and they know that it's a feasible and fun project, they will probably be, be more enthusiastic to accept you. And also when or if you end up sitting an interview for your research course, you will have the interview with the proposed supervisor that you put in your application and two other, two, one or two other people. And obviously it's nice to perhaps know, know a bit about the person that you uh, want to work with because the, um, the most important relationship you have during your, especially during your PhD, but also during your MPhil is your, the relationship with your supervisor. If that isn't working out, if they can't help you, or if you are incompatible, you can have a really hard time getting through your research degree. So this is really good. And also if you don't find somebody who can supervise your project, you probably won't get in. And that's really harsh. But as, so somebody told me at Cambridge that if you, so this just the director of studies and this, uh, the director of the course I was doing at Cambridge said, if anyone's thinking about applying to Cambridge and there's not a person there to help them, Cambridge isn't the place for them. You you should you will be much happier in another place because if you don't have anyone to help you, you'll be absolutely miserable. So these are three things to consider and also to remember when you, you receive the news on your application. So when you if you are successful or unsuccessful, it's important to keep these things in mind and reflect on why it went the way it did. Um, I think it's because if especially when people people who apply to Oxford and Cambridge are usually quite capable applicants and I think um, all the applications are competitive it's just it's just a matter of the, the the projects and whether or not they would be a good fit for the universities so I think that's important to keep in mind um I don't want to ramble on for too long I hope that was somewhat helpful uh, I'd, I'd encourage you all to apply um there's no harm in applying the worst thing that can happen is that you get rejected and and if you do, there's another university out there for you and you can always reapply, you can reapply over and over again. Uh, so yeah, I, I just wanted to say that real quick and um, now let's get on with the day, I suppose. It's a second later now, I was on the phone with Scandinavian Airlines, Starline Scandinavian Airlines customer service for like an hour. They've changed the flights to Sweden over Christmas. Some of them were cancelled, so I had to rebook those ones. It took a really long time, but now it's, I'm just going to do some quick work before lunch and then I'm going to have to go and do some food shopping. I want to take a moment to talk about this really, really cozy wool cardigan I'm wearing. It's from Another Stories and it's best thing that's happened in a long time. It's so warm. I sized up a bit um, so that it's big and cozy and perfect for studying. So yeah, I just wanted to give it a shout out because I love it and it's really warm and yeah. <laughs> I just Food. I just have some cream cheese with chilies and then hot broken hot bread and some blueberries. I'm not gonna have all of them, but just some blueberries. I know it's a not a very um, nutritious lunch, but I'm running out of time. I really need to go food shopping and then I need to, yeah, just get on with everything else I need to do today. So a bit stressed, but it shall all be okay. <laughs> just got changed uh, real quick and now it's time to, now it's time to head to it's time to head to the shops. I need to quickly do that. Um, wearing these boots today, I, I've coined these my winter boots. Um, and since it's officially November now, it's uh, about time to start using them. Um, so, yeah.
I just finished um just finished the seminar it was really interesting it was about corpus linguistics and corpus work which is always interesting and very fascinating um and also relevant to my own thesis for once so that was good um now i have the rowing um i have the rowing exercise virtual exercise thing in in about 45 minutes so i'm just gonna do something until then i suppose and then do that for an hour <laughs> just like um what the, the focus is usually on like legs because when you row you use a lot of your leg muscles but it's also um arms so to lift the boat you have to obviously <laughs> row and stuff so um yeah and a bit of cardio it's just a bit of everything and it's a lot of fun especially now we can't actually go and do the real thing so very fun <laughs> Um, jumper and I've had dinner, I've taken a shower and now it's time to keep doing some work before bed. supervision which is on in a week's time so ne uh, next Tuesday and it's getting late it's around 11 and I think I'm gonna start heading to bed um, so yeah thank you so much for watching this video um, I hope it was enjoyable and I hope the bit about like um, getting an Oscar came was somehow useful again if you want me to talk more about that please let me know and I can make like a a better in-depth video I just yeah I didn't feel qualified to talk much about it and yeah thank you so much for watching and